Pro's Tip, proudly presented by DeBro Fishing, innovative tackle storage solutions for every venue. Learn more online. Hey, on this Pro's Tip, I want to talk to you about Vermilion Snapper. You know, Vermilion are perhaps the most underrated of all snapper, and maybe it's because they don't reach, you know, gigantic status, with the record being somewhere around six pounds and the average fish one to three pounds. But that's okay because they're absolute great day savers when the bite is slow on some of the other more prized targeted bottom fish. They're fantastic on the dinner table, aggressive, generally easy to find, and just a great all around target for a variety of anglers and different ages, different skill levels. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about where to go look for vermilions. We're going to talk about boat positioning. We're going to talk about prime baits and how to prepare the baits properly. Tackle the rig that you need to catch these, you know, really tasty vermilions. And we're just going to walk you through the entire process and hopefully somewhere along the line we actually catch a few as well. So we're going to run out to a wreck. 255 feet of water that's going to be our first spot that we're going to fish it's about seven miles offshore so stick around for the ride and hopefully we get tight Pulled up to the spot here, 250, 255 foot, right on top of the wreck. We're at 245, about 10 feet of relief, which means that wreck comes up off the bottom about 10 feet. Now, proper positioning is everything. Absolutely crucial when you're targeting these vermilions. And keep in mind, you can catch these snappers around the entire state of Florida. They're readily available year round. You know, it's all about finding that magic depth they can be found in 80 to 300, 350 feet, but I find that 225 to 250, 275 on the high end, that range right there is ideal. So any sort of wrecks or structure will typically hold a vermilion snapper. But as I mentioned, positioning is everything. We're not anchoring on these spots, we're drifting. We're drifting across the wreck, alongside the wreck, up current, down current, trying to zero in on where these fish are holding up. And first and foremost, I'm gonna to get to the spot. I'm gonna stop right on the stop, right, literally right on top of the spot. Just stop the boat, spend a couple of minutes prepping your tackle, prepping bait, give the boat an opportunity to settle down and to drift and track exactly what direction you're drifting in. Now I know in this particular case, we're actually moving directly to the east right here. So we've got a little bit of current from the west, not a lot of wind here at all, but I know I'm gonna be moving to the east. So I'm gonna set myself up just on the western side of the structure and then allow us to drift right across it. And keep in mind, positioning, I cannot stress enough, is everything. If you're not in the right spot, reset, do it over again. Spend as much time as necessary to get in that right position because it's gonna make all of the difference. Now, when it comes to bait, I'll tell you what, there's absolutely no better bait than squid. Vermilion snapper, just they can't resist it. So a fresh piece of squid is really the ideal bait that you're looking for. Now you can get away with some meat fish, you know, any sort of bait fish cut into strips, but if you only had one bait, it would be squid. So you'll take that whole squid, you can cut the head off, you can cut that head in half, okay, and create a couple of pieces. And then you can come up to the body and you want to just do kind of lengthy strips, clean out all of that gack inside the squid. You obviously don't need that. And just strip it up, you know, depending on the size of the squid, you may get anywhere from six to ten pieces of bait from every squid. And again, what you're looking for are just nice, clean pieces, just like that. Doesn't need to be fancy, doesn't need to be crazy. Okay, that's all that you need is just something that those vermilions can easily get down their gullet. The heads work really well also with the tentacles. 
that's another great bait so don't discount that so from a medium to large size squid like i said easily six to ten baits now the rig really important when it comes to vermilion snapper fishing these vermilions you know they'll feed certainly on or near the bottom so they'll come up off the bottom away so i like my rig to have some coverage to it okay and you can see this is a five hook rig vmc 20 nemesis circle hooks on 100 pound diamond leader material you may think that's a little bit big for a fish that averages one to three pounds but i like my leader to be a little bit stiff it gives me more control of that rig less twist less tangles and let me tell you something you're going to be surprised at what eats these baits and at any time it may be a bigger fish so 80 to 100 pound is perfect leader material on your rig like i said a five hook rig but look at the distance that it spans starts up here and it just keeps going i'm probably covering look at that 10 feet of the water column 10 feet so when i drop that down my bottom bait is very close to the lead you know maybe 18 24 inches away from that lead right off the bottom but my top bait is 10 feet off the bottom and i'm really covering a large area my lead is going to vary depending on the depth depending on the speed of the current right now the Furuno saying we're drifting at 0.6 knots we're in 250 foot approximately i'm going to start off with 10 ounces obviously i need to be in the strike zone i need to be right on the bottom okay so that's really really important again a five hook rig i'm not typically trying to catch five at a time i'm trying to catch one at a time you know but these things are great bait stealers and oftentimes they'll rip all of that bait off and you'll only end up with one or sometimes a double or even a triple who knows keep in mind the limit is five per person so you don't need to catch five at one time because you've just caught your entire limit so that's our whole rig not a lot of junk not a lot of swivels there's one small little barrel swivel a 50 pound barrel swivel right connecting the actual main line right there to the leader okay to the rig itself is one small barrel swivel nothing else no other terminal tackle on this rig it's nice and clean remember you're fishing around structure the less terminal tackle you have the less times you're going to get hung up the less weeds so on and so forth you want to keep it stealthy you want to keep it clean when you're vermilion snapper fishing so we're all baited up nice squid strips as i mentioned on our 2o vmc circle hooks you've got to fish circle hooks for these fish non-stainless and if you're above that 28 degree line they have to be inline circle hooks remember that uh, but down here off the florida keys where we are off a of marathon non-stainless circle hooks are perfect they don't need to be in line that five hook rig i'm going to get into position drop it to the bottom and see if we could score got clobbered a few times missed a couple of bites and again that's why you fish with a multiple hook rig and then i finally came tight here on my first drop and what you want to do with these i mean just obviously a steady reel you know they're not fantastic fighters again these fish are one to three pounds but they're a lot of fun you know and you've got a fish a little bit of heavier tackle than you would expect for fish this size but that's only because we're fishing deep water quite a bit of lead you may hook something larger as well. So I'm fishing a Chaos eight foot conventional rod with a Daiwa, <sighs> oh, oh, it's getting a little bit heavier here. Saltiga 30HA loaded with 20 pound diamond line. And it looks like that's our first vermilion right there. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. You can see some of my other baits are gone here. Okay, fish that I missed, but that right there, target species beautiful that's a nice quality vermilion snapper right there and that circle hook did its job got him right in the corner of the mouth as expected and look that was actually my last bait all of my other baits are gone and this like this is actually a little bit above average so don't expect these fish to be jumbos but there's certainly nothing the matter with a vermilion snapper that size fantastic on the dinner table Man, I'm always dropping fish. There it is right there. Nice quality vermilion. Now, minimum size 12 inches on these fish with a five per person per day bag limit. But five of those give you a couple of great meals. So do it right and you're gonna stay tight. Right to the bottom. 
lock it up. This is not the type of fish where you want, oh, there's a bite. Oh, there's one right there, look at that. <laughs> this isn't the kind of fish where you need to, you know, feed it to them. They're gonna eat that squid, and at that point you just, you know, you're locked up, you're fishing as vertical as possible. You don't wanna feed it to them, just let them eat that bait, slowly lift that rod tip, and that circle hook will do the trick. And try and develop a pattern, you know, I'm noticing that these bites, these fish are on the down current side of the structure, very, very common. So as the day progresses and as your trip progresses, fine tune your approach, fine tune the boat positioning to make sure that you're maximizing every minute that those baits are down on the bottom. You know, it's the details. It doesn't seem like an incredibly complicated fish to catch, but to do it consistently and to catch quality vermilions, it's all in the details. It really is just like all other fisheries. Ooh, there's another good one right there. Look at that. Yeah. Ooh, fat. And look, that bait's gone. Obviously, all my other baits are gone. I missed a few more and got that one. Perfect. You know, just those small little adjustments of making sure I'm fishing at the right spot on the right side of the wreck, the right bait, the right hooks, it's all gonna come together and allow me to catch my limit. Great fish. All right, a couple tips for you. When you hit the bottom, especially if you're right on top of the structure or close to it, you know, reel up 10 cranks or 10 feet or something. Just get that rig up off the bottom. You're gonna get hung up a lot less and those snappers will eat it. You know, like I said, they hover around that wreck, above it. You know, they're aggressive. So don't think that you need to be dragging it right across the bottom. Oh, here he comes. Yeah, that looks like another good one. I'll tell you what, I'll take these two, three pounders all day long. One of my favorite fish to catch, one of my favorite fish to eat. Oh, look at that, yeah, chunky monkey. Woo, that could be the best one yet this morning. Uh, get in here. So pretty, often mistaken for red snapper. Yeah, because of course you can see that resemblance with the red snapper, but not a yellow eye, you know, that, that's a vermilion. It's not a yellow eye, it's not a red snapper, it's not a silky. It's got that red eye right there, beautiful pink color, often called a bee liner or a mingo snapper. But that's that target species. And I'll tell you what, like I said, it's not the largest fish, not the most glamorous fish, but an absolute great day saver. Hey. We talked a lot about it. We talked about getting in the right position, finding the structure, fishing the structure, you know, how important that is. We talked about tackle and the rig, the fresh baits, you know, getting to the bottom, fishing as vertical as possible. Not incredibly complicated, but you have to do it right. And when you put all of the pieces together, you're gonna have an absolute ball with beautiful vermilions.